fellas today we're going to be talking about some of the best duos in the ufc you can already think of one off the top of your head this is going to be two fighters who have fought in the ufc who are well not not necessarily fought each other but just fought in the ufc at one point and no matter the weight class or anything they just tend to get along well they tend to i don't know they, they just tend to bring a lot of good moments when they're around each other whether it be you know funny times or whatever it may be um, please let me know if i missed any duos or if you've got any of the topic off the top of your head but we're going to go in there with the first duo which for me is daniel cormier and habib well since habib's retired it's like daniel cormier has kind of gone to islam makachev i could have just put daniel cormier against any kind of dagestani fighter i don't know what his obsession is i think i'm pretty sure he trains at the same gym as them but bro they've got the best humor and i've noticed that whenever dagestan whenever uh daniel cormier is around habib he starts speaking similar to Habib. He starts, it's almost like he's trying to speak like a Dagestani trying to speak English, if you know what I mean. He kind of, he says less words, he pronounces things differently. It's almost as if he's trying to speak like Habib, even though Habib can understand him perfectly when he's speaking normal, you know, normal English, how he normally speaks. But I've noticed that Komi has kind of adjusted to him. Um, and he kind of likes to use vocabulary that's similar to Habib. But they're training partners. Uh, they're very close together. They've, they have a lot of friendly competition as well. If you've ever watched them train together, they have a lot of friendly competition. Again, I could have also used Daniel Cormier and Islam Makachev. Did you see that Islam Makachev and Volkanovski face-off, by the way, that was hosted by DC? I'm not sure DC was the fairest horse to have for that face-off, but either way, I mean, it's completely random at well uh, as well. At one point, you've got Daniel Cormier, who is a heavyweight, and then you've got a, a, an American heavyweight, and then you've got Habib, who's this... D this Dagestani Russian lightweight and somehow they've managed to become really close together I don't know it's really random but yeah they've got the best humor they're some of the funniest fighters together and I think Daniel Cormier and Habib if you got if you find on YouTube some of the moments that they have together it's pretty funny and like I said I could have included Daniel Cormier and Islam Makachev as well because Daniel Cormier and Islam Makachev tend to have some uh, good moments as well but yeah Daniel and Habib for me a great duo and as well it, they help each other when they're training as well obviously Habib is one of the best minds when it comes to grappling and Daniel Cormier being an absolute tank a heavyweight grappler perfect for Habib to train with and uh, same for Islam Makachev but yeah always you know a good duo and you can tell when Daniel Cormier is on commentary at a Habib fight or an Islam Makachev fight he's kind of biased towards them I'm not saying that's a bad thing listen I know they're close friends so that's understandable but you could they're a good duo. They're a good duo. So for me, I'm going to go Daniel Cormier and Habib. The next one, I'm going to go for Alex Pereira and Sean Strickland. Alex Pereira and Sean Strickland, for me, have to be up there. Purely for the fact that it's such a random duo. It's such a random duo. You've got Sean Strickland, who's one of the most, you know, that has no filter. He's American. And then you've got Alex Pereira, who doesn't even speak English, doesn't even say any words, and he's this like poet, this Brazilian warrior from the forests of Brazil, and somehow they've become really close. Um, but yeah, Alex Pereira is helping uh, Sean Strickland train for the fight with Adesanya, and I, I, I kind of feel like Alex Pereira is the number one Adesanya hater. He trained Strickland to beat Adesanya. He's beaten Adesanya three times himself. He beat the only guy that Adesanya's only other guy that Adesanya's lost to in a different division in Yamblho, which I feel like that he's the perfect uh, Adesanya hater. And then you've got Sean Strickland who beat him, beat him up for five rounds uh, at UFC 293 and 10-8ed him on the press conference as well. So they're both like the number one Adesanya haters, so that's kind of why they've come together. And like I said, they're, they're opposite people. They're complete opposites when, they, when it comes to personality. They couldn't be more different. Um, and then the good thing about this one is they're actually former opponents turned teammates. Obviously, they fought on, I forgot what pay-per-view it was. I think it was the Adesanya versus Kananir one. But yeah, they're former opponents. Obviously, Alex Pereira slept Sean Strickland. And it's kind of cool how they've gone from former opponents to, to training partners. And I'm glad that Sean Strickland doesn't have an ego about him where he doesn't really want to train with Alex Pereira because he got slept by him and he kind of, I don't know, maybe he holds a grudge against him, but... I'm glad that they trained together, and they could both be champions of different divisions. If Alex Pereira beats Yuri Prohaska at UFC 295, they're both going to be champions of different divisions. So for me, they're one of the best duos in the UFC right now, and it's funny as well because of how opposite they are. Like, Alex Pereira and Sean Strickland couldn't be more different. So for me, that's the, that's the second duo. 
Another one I'm going to go for as well, and it's not in here, but you could have also included Alex Pereira and Glover Teixeira because they're literally, they're really close together. Obviously, Glover Teixeira helps Alex Pereira train with grappling, which helped him a lot in the Blahovic fight. Um, but yeah, I kind of like as, as well that Glover Teixeira was the champion. And the second that he loses the belt, Alex Pereira makes a move to the light heavyweight division. On top of that, they're always buying each other gifts pranking each other. I feel like Alex Pereira and Glover Teixeira are, again, a very notable duo that you can include in this list. It's weird. Alex Pereira gets along with some of the... The, the, uh, some of the duos in this list are complete opposites, but yeah, Alex Pereira and Sean Strickland, Alex Pereira, I can't speak today, Alex Pereira and Glover Teixeira, they're also a duo that you can use, and yeah, the next duo is Michael Bisping and Dominic Cruz, it's a really weird one. Both of them have a lot in common. They're both former champions. Obviously, Michael Bisping was the former middleweight champion and Dominic Cruz was the former, um, was it, a bantamweight champion. They both got knocked out in their most recent fight and they troll each other every time they're inside. I've noticed that every single time Michael Bisping and Dominic Cruz in the radius of each other, where it, whether it's on commentary, no matter where it is, I notice that they're always trolling each other, even online, even before, even when it, the commentary is not even on and they're preparing for the commentary, they're still always trolling each other um, and they are an annoying commentary duo because they're always you know slightly poking digs at each other you've got Bispin poking digs at Dominic Cruz for being short you've got Dominic Cruz poking digs at Bispin for having one eye they're always going at it but for me they've got to be up there with one of the best duos in the UFC for me personally I just feel like Bispin I don't know he, I always I find like he just gets angry at everyone and Dominic Cruz even though he trash talks Bispin the most Bispin doesn't really take it personally same for Dominic Cruz um, I don't think either of them are the best commentators in the UFC. I feel like, they, you know, they've got a lot of weird takes. You know, for example, Bispin in UFC London wouldn't stop talking about Aspinall. Dominic Cruz sometimes, you know, he's sometimes a little bit biased as well in the bantamweight division. But I feel like when they're both together, they're a really good duo. And even though they're annoying on commentary, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like they keep, keep each other in check. And for me... Dominic Cruz and Michael Bisping, again, another really random one. Both trash talkers, but, you know, one's in the middleweight division from the UK, one's from America in the bantamweight division. It's a bit of a weird duo, but either way, yeah, they get along with each other. Both got a lot in common, both commentators, both been champions, both got knocked out in the most recent fight, but either way, Michael Bisping and Dominic Cruz, for me, you've got to put him in the top, you know, top duo in the UFC. And the next one for me is Covington and Zhang Weili. Again, it's another really, like, random one. No one ever expected Colby Covington and Zhang Weili. This is probably the most random one on the list, to be honest with you. Colby Covington and Zhang Weili. If you'd have told me that two years ago that Colby Covington and Zhang Weili was going to be, you know, a duo in the UFC, I, don't, I wouldn't even know what to expect. And another thing I've noticed between them is that ever since they've kind of become this friendship, they've both done really well. Um, I know I spelled friends, what, friends wrong on the screen, by the way. But he, um, what I mean by that is Covington, ever since he's kind of got close to Zhang Weili, obviously he got the win over Masvidal, and then it, now he's going to be fighting Leon Edwards for the title. And Zhang Weili's got on to absolutely dominate Carla Esparza, and now she's just uh, dominated Amanda Lemos as well. So both of them, it's kind of like they both have a good luck charm around them. They've, they've both been successful since they've been a duo. The only time they weren't really successful when it was a duo was, I guess, the Usman versus Covington one. But either way, um, it's the only time you ever see Covington nice as well, which is good because Covington, 95% of the time, he's trash-talking opponents, he's disrespecting them. You know, Covington, most of the time, he's just being annoying. And you never really get to see, even online, every single time you see Covington, he's always trashing opponents. Whereas I feel like with Zhang Weili, it's the only time where Covington is kind of not really trashing people. He, you know, he, he's kind of got a soft spot for Zhang Weili as well. And they're always going at it on Instagram and, and stuff, supporting each other. So for me, I'm going to go Covington and Zhang Weili. Completely random duo. Absolutely no one was expecting it. But either way... Again, only time Covington is nice, and Zhang Weili, even though she doesn't speak English as well as she's Chinese, but she still finds a way to uh, support Covington, so you've got to give it to her, man. You know, whenever Zhang Weili's fighting, you've got Kobe Covington giving good luck. Likewise, when Covington's fighting, you've got Zhang Weili giving him good luck. Uh, but either way, Covington and Zhang Weili, because no one else on the roster is going to like Kobe Covington, let's be honest. If you're a male fighter, the chances are you're not going to be close to Kobe Covington because he's probably trashed every a single male fighter in the UFC, whereas Zhang Weili, obviously, yeah, they, they get along with each other, so for me, I'm going Covington and Zhang Weili, and then the final duo, it's kind of gone away now, but it's Hamzat Chumayev and Darren Till, 
although they were a good duo, I just feel like they didn't really you know work in the way that they should have what we expected to happen was darren till was going to become really close friends with hamza they were going to corner each other um, which was a little bit weird considering they were both in the same weight class so if both of them are going for the title surely they'd end up fighting each other like aljo and marab um, and i haven't included aljo and marab in this list because i feel like they're not a good duo at all um, no one really likes the fact that they're a duo because they're holding up the division and it kind of just doesn't make sense for Aljo either way. I'm glad that he's not champion anymore. Not because I don't like Aljo, but I'm sick of this Marab holding back situation. But either way, I'm getting off topic here. I expected Darren Till to be a lot better when he was grappling after working with Hamzat Chemaev. And I know he was facing Drika Stuplessy, who's probably going to be middleweight champion within a few fights. And that win has kind of aged well, considering Drika was able to stop Whitaker. But I don't know, I just expected a lot more from, from Darren Till. It just seemed like he was... Not that it was off, because he looks like that every fight, because he's just not good and he's not even in the UFC anymore. But I don't know, I just feel like it was a... It, at first, I thought it was a good move, but then it kind of negatively impacted both of them. I mean, ever since Hamzat started, it's kind of like the opposite of Zhang Wili and Corby Covington because ever since Hamzat's been hanging around with Darren Till, he did beat Gilbert Burns, but it was one of his, you know, sloppiest performances. You know, he didn't look great against Gilbert Burns, or maybe Burns were just that good and, you know, maybe Hamzat couldn't stop him, but he didn't look his best against Gilbert Burns and then obviously missed weight by like eight pounds against Nate Diaz. So he en ended up having to fight Kevin Holland and Darren Till since working with Hamza, we all expected us to see the new Dagestani version of Darren Till, the Darren Till that could wrestle. We, you know, we're expecting to see some insane Darren Till in reality. He looked like he hadn't learned a thing. He looked slightly better than the one that fought Derek Brunson and that's about it. So I feel like as good as, uh, you know, as good as they were on Block Asset and the whole vlog state series they did. And I feel like their personalities, again, are completely random. You've got some random Swedish guy on hype, you know, a hype training. And then you've got an English scouser who's been in the UFC for so long now. Another random duo, but... As, as funny as they were personality-wise and their personalities mixed, and even Hamzat started learning Scouse, which is, is crazy, but um, yeah, I feel like performance-wise, they didn't really help each other, and in a way, I'm kind of glad that they're not working with each other anymore. As, like I said, they can be friends. I, I don't mind them as friends. I think they're really, really funny personality-wise, but performance-wise, it just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't work because yeah, it just, just didn't work, and for me... Those are the best duos in the UFC. Please let me know if I missed any duos out or, you know, maybe some on this list you didn't prefer. But either way, thank you for watching.